Veronica. So again, my name is Anthony Burek. I am an OTAN project specialist, um, and we are located in the Sacramento County Office of Education. Um, that's where our office is. Um, if you would like to contact me after the webinar, you can email me um, aburek at otan.us, or please follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at otananthony. And as Ronica mentioned, um, we're going to be spending um, a lot of time on the OTAN website. So if you would like to bring that up on your computer, you can just type in otan.us in the address bar, and that should bring you to our website. So before we get started, I just want to go over the agenda for today, um, what we're going to talk about. Um, so I want to do um, introductions uh, by way of a survey, um, and I'll talk about that in a second, how we, how we uh, go ahead and complete that survey. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about OTAN, if you're not familiar with OTAN, who we are. Um, we're, going to talk, uh, we're going to go over to the OTAN website for just kind of a general introduction to the website. And also talk about membership, which is probably the best way to stay connected with us after today's uh, webinar. And then today we're going to spend most of our time talking about three things. One is the uh, about the training opportunities that OTAN offers and how you can uh, take advantage of those training opportunities. We're going to talk about teaching tools and resources that are housed on the OTAN website that are freely available. And then we're going to talk about how to stay connected to OTAN after today. So I mentioned becoming a member on the OTAN website, but there are other ways to stay connected with us and learn more about what we're doing throughout the school year. Um, if we have time at the very end, um, we'll talk a little bit about a special project that we're involved with called the Adult Education Student Succeeds Project. And then um, that's our agenda for today. Um, it's a lot to cover in an hour, but hopefully we'll make it through the hour OK. Again, if you have any questions as we're going through um, the webinar today, uh, please feel free to put those uh, questions in the chat box, and we'll make sure to get to them as they come up. So um, to get started, what I would like us to do is begin with a survey. And you'll see the survey link that it's a, that's at the very bottom of this slide. So again, if you're um, online, if you open up a new window or tab and type in the address bar, bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y slash OTAN, O-T-A-N, and those are all capital letters, OTAN 19 demo. Um, it should take you to a survey. Um, Melinda has added the URL uh, in the chat pod, so you can just go ahead and click on that URL, and that should take you, uh, you to the survey directly. I'm going to bring up the survey here. Give me one second to switch over to uh, my screen. OK, um, you should see the OTAN website, which we'll get to in a second. But the survey um, looks like this. It has sort of a bluish purplish banner across the top. Um, it's titled OTAN survey. And you see uh, there are five questions there. There are three multiple choice questions, a drop down question, and then a short answer. So um, if each of you could just go ahead and complete this survey, um, I'm going to switch back over so you have the link again. Give me a second as I switch back over. There we go. And OK, so again, um, we're back. Um, on the slide. So if you want to grab that uh, or type in that URL at the very bottom, and then, or you could click on the link that's in the chat pod, um, then go ahead and fill out that survey. Um, again, it should be pretty short, just has the, the five questions. Um, and then we'll take a look and see how people have answered the survey, completed the survey. And I'm going to switch back over to the survey. So I'll just mention that, um, and we'll talk about this shortly, but one of the things that OTAN uh, does um, as, a, as um, an adult education leadership project is provide training, technology training for the field. Um, last Friday, we actually were in uh, San Bernardino at San Bernardino Valley College. We were a part of the Google uh, Summit for Adult Education that day. 
and we talked about training for all kinds of Google products, including Google Forms, which is what we're looking at today. Um, and so we always like to use technology in our trainings to show people how that um, how they can incorporate technology into their presentations, into their classroom instruction. Um, so if you're interested in um, more Google training, we'll talk about how to get in touch with OTAN to perhaps schedule a Google training at your site. So I'm going to switch over to the responses. We have three responses recorded here. Um, so the first question is, what is your job? So it looks like we have um, one administrator and two support staff. Great, fantastic. OK, next question. Have you ever attended an OTAN workshop, webinar, and or conference presentation? So it looks like a couple of you actually have seen us somewhere in some capacity, maybe online or at a face-to-face -face meeting, um, but one person has not ever seen us. So great. We're very friendly people. Um, don't be shy. Don't be afraid of us. We like to talk to people and all that. Um, OK, next question. What year was OTN founded? 1989, everybody answered yes. That actually is the correct answer. And we just celebrated our 30-year anniversary. Um, we are 30 years old and going strong and looking forward to the next 30 years and beyond. OK, OTAN is on all of these social media sites except, so two people said LinkedIn and one person said Pinterest. So the person who answered Pinterest, that actually is the correct answer. So we are on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, um, but not Pinterest. So, um, And we'll talk about our social media sites um, when we talk about staying connected with us uh, later in today's webinar. OK, and then the last question was, what is the most important thing you would like to learn today? So we have a couple of responses. So best tools and how to communicate these easily with staff and also resource to, resources to patch, pass on to the teaching staff. OK, great. Yes, we are definitely going to spend a lot of time speaking about um, the resources that are available, training opportunities that are available. And we really appreciate um, you know, when we have the opportunity to meet with our colleagues in the adult education field across the state that all of you then share that information with your colleagues at your school, uh, maybe back in your region, if you're active in your adult education consortium. Um, we really appreciate you know, um, letting folks know about OTAN and the kinds of um, services that we provide for the field. So thank you for doing that, and thank you for helping us out. OK, so again, as I mentioned, this is a Google form that we just worked on together, um, an example of a technology tool that we provide training for um, and we'll, when we get to the training in a minute, we'll talk about, um, you know, what kind of trainings OTAN provides and um, how you can get in touch with us on the trainings. And I'm switching back to my screen. Give me a second here. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. And as Veronica mentioned in the beginning, if you weren't here um, at the very beginning, you can download a copy of my slides from the resources pod. Um, I've turned the slides into a PDF that you can download and you can follow along um, or have for later. OK, so um, this is a very beautiful graphic of um, some of the things that OTAN does. And we'll talk about all these things as we go through. But first, I want to talk about um, just a, a little quick word about um, California State Leadership Projects for Adult Education. So um, we're very blessed in the state of California. We actually have three um, state leadership projects for adult education. Um, and you might have heard of the other two, including OTAN. So one is CASAS, which is our lead agency on assessment and data collection and data accountability. We also have CalPRO. Um, they're with us here in the Sacramento area. Um, they provide professional development training, um, especially for classroom instruction. Um, they do a lot of trainings uh, throughout the year and um, pull together groups from across the state to work on sort of PLC activities and training throughout the year. Um, OTAN is the third state leadership project. And again, we provide technology training for adult educators across the state. And we also um, help adult educators think about how to integrate technology into their instructional practices. Um, our mission really is to work with adult educators um, teachers and support staff and, and administrators across the state 
um, but to give you the tools to then turn around and use those tools in your classrooms and at your schools, and especially to help students with digital uh, literacy training as well, digital skills training as well. Um, so again, that's really our primary mission um, as a state leadership project for adult education. Okay, so we're going to switch over to um, a discussion of the OTAN website, which is kind of our main point of contact with adult education folks um, in California and actually across the state or across the um, across the country and even across the world as well. So our, our website is freely available. Um, the resources that you see there are freely available. Um, now, when it comes to training, which we'll talk about in a second, um, we can, um, OTAN provides training for WIOA funded agencies in California. So the, our, our mission is to work with WIOA funded agencies across the state. So um, when it comes to training um, opportunities, um, we really focus on working with uh, WIOA agencies. But um, as many of you know, through the Adult Education Consortium process, there are ways that we can also um, connect with uh, consortium partners of adult education agencies across the state. For example, the Google Summit that we were just at last week um, was actually a CAPE effort, a California Adult Education Project effort. Um, but OTAN is one of the partners that works with CAPE to do training across the state. So um, let's go back to the website here. So what we're looking at is just a slide of the top of the OTAN website. Um, I just want to point out a few things before we go live to the website. So in the upper left-hand corner, um, you should see an eye um, icon. And this eye icon will appear on every page of the OTAN website um, that you visit. Um, it's an accessibility uh, icon so if you click to open it and when we go to the live website you'll see when you click to open it you actually have a number of accessibility features that you can turn on that will make your uh, viewing of the website much easier depending on whether you have a disability or actually whether even if you don't have a disability you might take advantage of some of the um, uh, access accessibility features that are built into our website for maybe an easier easier viewing experience so again, this accessibility icon will appear on every single page of the website that you visit. Um, here's the OTAN logo. You can click the OTAN logo at any time to return to the home page of our website. So that's just kind of a quick way to get back to the home page. Um, we have a series of um, a series of drop down menus across the top. Today we're going to focus again mainly on training, resources, and stay connected. We'll also talk about membership in just a second with this join OTAN uh, button at the very top. Um, we have a keyword box here. You could type um, any term into the keyword box and it will bring up um, whichever resources are, that are affiliated with that keyword. Um, it'll bring it up on a page for you. Um, it's a much more robust search feature than we had on our previous website. Um, so take advantage of this key, uh, keyword search box if you're looking for something in particular. Um, we always have a news item posted on our website, and we try to post a couple of different news items during the week on our website. Um, we'll talk about that later when we talk uh, about how to stay connected with us. And then across the right-hand side, um, from top to bottom, we have a series of icons um, that will take you to various places, and we'll talk about those shortly. Um, on the bottom... Looking at the bottom part of the OTAN website, and I've just lost my, uh, just lost the beautiful, oh, there it is. Okay, couldn't see it. Okay. Um, okay, so looking towards the bottom part of the OTAN website, um, you'll notice over here on the right hand side, we have this contact us box. And actually, you'll find this box um, everywhere that you visit on the website. So if you're looking at a particular part of the website and you have questions about it, you can type in a little contact message and it will come directly to us. And then we'll know that, you know, we'll know um, where you were visiting on the website and what your specific questions are. So this is kind of a handy way to contact us. Um, we do have a page or a little kind of section here of the page on our social media sites. Um, we are on um, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and we also have a YouTube channel as well. 
um, and we'll talk about those shortly. But you can kind of get a, a quick little snapshot of what we're working on on social media down here on the bottom of the OTAN website. Okay, so having said that, let me turn that off. Okay, so let's start with the um, OTAN membership and how to uh, become a member of the OTAN uh, website. So again, if you're on the website, in the upper right-hand corner, um, you'll see a little Join um, OTAN drop-down uh, button. So if you go ahead and click on that drop-down, you'll get this membership button. And when you click on the membership button, um, it will bring you to a page. And I'm going to switch this over to the website so we can take a look and see what that page includes. So again, you hit Join OTAN in the upper right-hand corner. And then you click on membership. Now, if you're already a member of the OTAN website, or maybe you joined a while ago, you I would recommend that you actually go back in, um, put your email, your contact email address here in the box and log back into the membership um, website so you can update your information. I know that a lot of us move around the state, we have different positions, we move to different agencies. So in order to stay connected with us, just go ahead and log back into your account. But if you're a new user to the website, go ahead and click on that uh, register as a new user link and it'll bring you up to this page. So we're just looking for some basic contact information, name, email address, which agency you work for, um, what's your job uh, title, uh, maybe some contact information for the agency. As we scroll down towards the bottom of the membership form, we ask you some questions about OTAN publications. So if you would like to receive any of these publications, either the Teacher Digest or the Administrator Digest or perhaps the OTAN newsletter, um, you can go ahead and select yes for those items. At the very bottom, um, I just want to point out one of the email notifications that's included on the form and that is pro professional development. So if you say yes um, to this email notification, what that means is that if we happen to be doing an open training in your general geographic region, maybe not at your agency specifically, but maybe somewhere within, say, like a 20, you know, 25, 50 mile radius of the agency, we will email everyone to let them know about that open training. And then since it's an open training, anybody is free to join the training. So you could actually join the training even if it's not at your agency. So if you select yes for pro professional development, then you will be um, included on any of those email notifications about open trainings that are in your sort of immediate geographic area. Um, once you finish the membership form, just make sure to go ahead and save that at the very bottom. And then you will join as an OTAN member on our website. Just so you know, um, if you are interested in our privacy policy, it is lo uh, listed here at the very bottom of the OTAN website. You can go ahead and click on that. Um, even if, uh, sorry, not even if, but when you become a member on the OTAN website, um, we don't share that information with any external third parties. We don't sell your contact information to anyone. We keep that all internal within our own agency. So um, you should feel pretty secure in knowing that um, OTAN is not going to share your contact information with, you know, broadly and widely with anyone. Okay, so again, that's how you become a member on the OTAN website. And I would say, again, I would say that that's probably the best way to stay connected with OTAN. Um, we do quite a few ma um, emailings throughout the, um, throughout the month, for example. We want folks to know about either projects that we're working on currently or things that are upcoming. Um, other kinds of OTAN, OTAN events that are um, in the offing. So um, becoming a member on the website is really the best way to stay connected with us. Okay, I'm going to switch back to my slides here. And again, if you have any questions about anything as we're going along, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll address them as we're going along. Okay, so we're going to switch over to a discussion about training opportunities. And again, as I mentioned um, today we're in the hour, we're going to focus on training first and then resources and stay connected. And those are um, the drop down menus that are listed across the top of the OTAN uh, website. Um, for each of the uh, drop down menus, you'll notice actually the first item is something called What's Here. 
So if you click on the what's here, this will give you a short description of all of the items that are listed in that, um, that are um, located in that part of the website. So if you want to see just kind of a, a quick snapshot or snippet of face-to-face -face workshops, online workshops, TDLS, DLAC, and the calendar, that will all be included on the what's here page. Um, okay, so let's switch back over to the OTAN website, take a look at these things. Again, if I click on the OTAN icon in the upper left-hand corner, that will take me right back to the home page. And while we're here, oh, and we just have a brand new news item, just, <laughs> just got turned on, fantastic. Okay, um, I also, while we're here, in the very upper left-hand corner, I do want to point out this accessibility icon that I mentioned a few minutes ago. So again, if you click on this accessibility, uh, if you click on the icon, the eye icon, it will open up this accessibility menu, and it gives you a number of different options, accessibility options. You can turn these on and off. So for example, um, if you want to switch from, um, if you want to switch to grayscale color mode instead of the regular color mode, if you, we go ahead and just click on that, now you should have noticed a switch over to a grayscale color mode, and then we can switch easily back to a regular color mode. Um, if you need the font to be larger, for example, you could click on that. Um, you should have noticed that the font size increased across the website. So with the news item, with the items, with the contact box, for example, things like that. Okay. If you just want to switch back to normal size, you can do that as well. Um, since our website is relatively new, um, it actually launched at the very end of September. I want to point out this button on the right hand side in yellow it's called new website orientation. If we, click, if we click on that button, actually the first handout that we have listed here is called OTAN website accessibility features. If you click on that, you actually will get a larger, uh, a longer description of the different items that are included in the accessibility menu and why you might want to um, switch some of those accessibility features on um, for a better viewing experience on our website. So that information is included in this document here. Okay. And um, after today, you can also take a look at these other handouts that we've included on how to create an OTAN account, which I just talked about, but also information about trainings, teaching tools, news items, our YouTube channel, and then some special programs and events. For example, the Adult Education uh, Student Succeeds program. Okay, but let's go back to training for a second. So again, if I click on the What's Here link um, initially, I will get a short description of all of the items are, that are included in training. So face-to-face -face workshops, online workshops, the calendar, DLAC, and TDLS, and then just a brief description of what each of those items is. Okay. So let's start with our trainings. So if I click on face-to-face -face tra uh, workshops first. So um, for both face-to-face -face workshops and online workshops, we have a list of the workshops that we currently offer um, to the field, to the adult education field. So I'm scrolling through the face-to-face -face workshops. You'll see that we have quite a few workshops. Um, we also are, uh, we're kind of always in the process of updating this list, you know, depending on interest from the field, um, new workshops that um, OTAN staff and OTAN trainers develop that we would like to offer to the field as well. But the list at any one time will give you a really nice uh, snapshot of um, the kinds of workshops that we can offer, offer to the field. Again, for face-to-face -face workshops, um, this is something that we work with um, WIOA-funded agencies to arrange at their agency. And we try to schedule a three-hour face-to-face workshop on any of these topics with an adult education WIOA funded agency. For face-to-face -face workshops, we do require a, a minimum of 10 participants. Um, sometimes if an agency isn't able to get the 10 staff from their agency, they will open it up. Um, they will turn it over or have it become an, um, an open workshop. And that way we can draw in um, other adult education staff from other agencies in the area. Again, we can also let people within kind of a, a radius know as well. Um, so that those folks are welcome to attend the open trainings as well. Um, but we do encourage agencies, for example, when they do their back to school, um, 
their back to school days or if they're doing in services. Um, we're always we're always happy to be a part of those events um, and to help the agencies with any kind of training on technology topics or tools that they would like to incorporate into those events. So again, um, we have a list of the face-to-face -face workshops. Um, if we just click um, on the first title, for example, you'll get a longer description of the uh, content that's a part of that workshop. Um, we can also, you know, if you if you are reading a workshop description and you see it and you're like, well, I really like um, this workshop, but I also want to customize it a bit for, you know, maybe something in particular that's happening at our agency. We also are very flexible. Um, we're happy to work with you to customize it. Um, as you need it so that it really will address the training needs of the staff at your agency. So um, don't feel like that this list is necessarily set in stone or, or a workshop description is set in stone. Um, we're always happy to uh, work with agencies to customize um, to make sure that we're really meeting your uh, training needs for the staff at your school. So again, we have a list of face-to-face -face workshops here, the three-hour workshops that we do at the agency. We also have a list of online workshops as well. Um, these are shorter. They tend to be anywhere from, say, like an hour to an hour and a half, um, again, on a variety of topics. Um, it won't necessarily have the, um, the kind of hands-on um, feature that a face-to-face -face workshop would have that we build into those workshops. Um, it's a little bit more difficult in the online realm, but we'll do our best to um, you know, do a presentation that includes a description of the content as well as, you know, if we can get some um, hand to hand, hands, uh, hands, not hand to hand, um, not like hand, hand to hand combat or anything, but if we can get some hands on training in those online workshops as well. Um, like the Google form that we did at the very beginning, we'll try to build that into the online as well. Okay. Um, Moving along, I want to talk about a few other um, training opportunities available to the field. So first, let's talk about our technology and distance learning symposium. Um, OTAN has been uh, hosting a uh, technology and distance learning symposium for a number of years now. Um, this is a two-day um, conference that we host. Um, you'll see here that next March 6 and 7, um, which are Friday and Saturday, we will be hosting the uh, TDLS conference. It's actually going to be in the Sacramento area. Um, we have some registration information here. The registration actually is open right now. We opened it in the second half of November, um, but it's going to be open until we reach our 200 participant limit. Um, and I heard yesterday we, at our staff meeting, I think so far 50 or, folks or so have already registered for TDLS this year. Um, there's a nominal registration fee, $35 per person, but that includes breakfast and lunch both Friday and Saturday of the conference. Um, if you've never been to a TDLS, I first of all, I highly encourage you, if you can, to attend it. Um, it's all things technology. It's, it's a jam-packed lineup of technology-related um, sessions on how we can use a variety of tools in our classrooms. Um, and incorporate technology for the benefit of our students and staff. Um, but if you've never been to a TDLS before, I would encourage you um, to take a look at the um, last year's program. So if you click on this link for TDLS 2019 in the upper right-hand corner, that'll take you to our um, kind of an abbreviated page for last year, but I would um, encourage you to review last year's program um, to get a sense of the kinds of sessions that you'll see to, at TDLS. Um, in our upcoming TDLS next year. We really cover a wide gamut of tech tools and technology topics um, in, in the two days. So um, I would really encourage you to attend if it's possible. Um, before I jo joined OTAN as a staff member, actually this was one of the ways that I stayed connected with OTAN. Um, and every year I made sure to attend TDLS, um, no matter, I was, I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, but even if it was in Southern California, I would make the effort to go to TDLS every year. Um, just because there's so much information, um, I made a lot of great connections as well with other teachers who are trying to incorporate technology into their classrooms and their schools. So it's a great networking um, opportunity as well. Um, let me go back to the OTN homepage. 
Um, I see, Veronica, do we have some questions that have come up about that? Or Melinda? No questions as of right now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So that's about TDLS. Um, let's move on to the Digital Leadership Academy. So um, some of you who um, some of you may know that for many years OTAN actually hosted um, two year-long professional development academies. One of them had to do with um, mentorship, um, and the other had to do with online teaching. And starting in 2016, OTAN decided to combine those two um, academies into a much longer two-year academy. Um, and so the Digital Leadership Academy was born. Um, the first cohort was 2016 to 2018. Um, <clears throat> we currently are in our second cohort, uh, 2018 to 2020. So the um, agencies are seven agencies that are participating in DLAC um, in this current cohort. And um, they are in the second year of their uh, program. And really the idea is for these agencies to spend a, a really kind of dedicated two-year uh, cycle um, on any on a particular technology integration project that they're working on at their agency and they tend the projects tend to be um, affiliated with the technology and distance learning plan that WIOA funded agencies are required to complete every year um, and by the way that plan is due January 31st 2020 so um, there's a close correlation between, or a close connection between uh, an agency's TDLP and their participation in DLAC. So um, we, as I mentioned, we're in the second year of our current cohort. Um, so the, um, the cohort will finish next uh, spring, 2020. And then we will open up um, the DLAC application process in the fall of next year. So back at your agency if you're you know if you're thinking about or have been thinking about technology projects that you would like to incorporate into your agency um, but really need kind of a you know sort of a dedicated period and a dedicated effort um, to really realizing those plans um, I would really strongly encourage you to um, apply to when, when that agency uh, sorry when that application opens next fall um, typically, we're looking for a team of two or three at the agency, um, an administrator who can oversee the team um, back at the agency, and then teachers who or coordinators who will be really kind of a part, um, will be the kind of the main spearheading um, group back at the agency that's going to work on the plan. So you can learn more about DLAC. Um, about what it is and how we structure the, um, if you scroll down a bit on the, on the first page, kind of how we structure the, um, the two-year um, uh, DLAC cohort. We do a number of face-to-face -face meetings in Sacramento, but we also do online meetings as well. We do site visits with the agency. Each agency has a coach that they work with over the two-year term. Um, so it's really a very intensive um, effort to realize um, you know certain technology projects that you have planned at your agency so if you would like more information please review the DLAC um, information here that's on our website okay finally um, I want to just briefly mention this calendar that is linked to the OTAN website this is the California adult education profession professional development calendar and it actually lists um, events upcoming events not only for OTAN but for some other um, agencies as well. So if you, over on the left-hand side, I opened up the Buy Sponsor dropdown. So you'll see that CAPE is included here, also CalPRO, also CASAS, also OTAN. And then sometimes we also include um, events for other agencies as well that are working in the adult education field. Um, but we list those events here on the calendar, on the California Adult Education PD calendar. Um, you could actually filter just for upcoming OTAN events, for example. So you'll see that we have both online and face-to-face -face events coming up in the next few months. They'll be listed here. Um, but this is actually a nice uh, calendar to review periodically, you know, just to see if there are events coming up, either online or face-to-face, -face, that you might be interested in participating in. And again, OTAN events are included on the calendar. 
Okay, so that's basically it for the training section. I don't know if there, uh, let me switch back over. Veronica, I don't know if we have any questions at the moment on anything that we saw with the training um, items. No, no questions. Okay. All right, let me switch back over. Okay. Um, so again, I mentioned TDLS. Um, let me just talk about OTAN Tech Talks for a minute as well. So um, one of the, we talked about online workshops, but actually um, one of the things that we've done now for going on our second year, um, our, 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 our OTAN Tech Talks. So um, we host a Tech Talk once a month. Um, it's the second Friday of every month. So actually this Friday um, is our scheduled December Tech Talk. And it's really meant um, in an hour's time to um, talk about a tech tool or tech topic. Um, we invite um, practitioners from the field and also OTAN trainers to um, present on a variety of tech, uh, uh, tech tools and tech topics. Um, the way that the tech talk is structured, so we, we give sort of the first 20 minutes or so to the presenter to do a um, kind of a, um, a presentation, a, a, a uh, formatted presentation introducing the, to uh, the tool or the topic, and then we open it up to a question and answer where you can ask the presenter any questions about the presentation or about the tool. Um, so again, our December one is coming up this Friday. It's on Kahoot and quizzes in the classroom, so a couple of popular tech tools that a lot of teachers use. Um, on our YouTube channel, which I'll talk about later, we also have a space dedicated to the archive tech talks that we have hosted. So you can um, actually listen in on a number of different tech talks that we've had previously on, on a variety of topics. Um, and again, they're quick, um, nice little quick PD opportunities to learn more about um, some of the tools and topics that folks are working on in the field. And when we talk about the YouTube channel, I'll show you where that's located. Okay, um, so moving on. So the next thing to talk about on the OTAN website um, is our section dedicated to teaching tools and resources. And we have a number of tools and resources listed on the, um, on the dropdown, but I'm just going to talk about the ones that you see um, in the red box near the top of the menu. Um, I'm going to talk about these ones in particular. We're going to talk about our teaching with technology tool. We're going to talk about web-based class activities curriculum offers, and our adult education courses, which are our online co courses um, hosted on our Moodle site. So I'm going to focus on those tools in particular. So let me switch again back over to the OTAN website. OK, so again, if we're at the top of the OTAN website across the top, and we open up the uh, resources drop down menu, so again, the first thing here is the what's here, where we can get a very short description of all the items that are included here. Um, but I'm going to start with, I'm going to take them a little bit out of order here. So I'm going to start with our Teaching with Technology tool. So the Teaching with Technology tool is basically a database of, um, not necessarily, I wouldn't call them lesson plans, but they're sort of um, lesson plan-ish, <laughs> maybe lesson ideas um, on how to incorporate technology into the lessons that you're doing back in your classroom. So the way we have the technology, uh, sorry, the Teaching with Technology tool set up is first you'd want to basically look at your program area. So we focus um, in on ABE, on ASE, both the, both the equivalency side and the high school diploma side and then ESL. So let's say, for example, we pick, um, we'll pick ABE. Okay, so um, as you can see, within ABE, we have 253 resources that have been tagged for ABE. Although you might, if you're visiting the other parts of the Teaching with Technology tool, maybe an ESL or, or ASC, some of these tools might come up as well because they, they tend to you know, kind of cut across programs as it were. But um, within ABE, for example, on the right-hand side, you do have the opportunity to try to filter this 
uh, list down to something that's a little bit more manageable than 253 results. So we give you a couple of different options for filtering. Um, and it, it's they tend to be uh, tied to the program area that you're looking at. So you may not see the same set of filters if you're over on the ASC side, for example. But let me just explain what we're looking at here. So the first is um, kind of what level or levels of students are you working with in your ABE classroom. And since these are checkboxes, you could actually check as many checkboxes as you would like. So maybe your ABE class is more on the intermediate and high side, or maybe your ABE class is more on the low intermediate side, or maybe it's just one or the other or the other. Um, so you can uh, select one, of the, one or more of those levels. The second set of filters here has to do with the subjects that you're teaching. So maybe you're looking at things that are more, you know, reading and writing, or maybe you're looking for resources that are more listening and speaking, or maybe you're looking for grammar and reading and writing. So you can select as many of those subject areas as you would, or subject subjects as you would like. Finally, the last set of filters here has to do with standards. So um, you may this list may be familiar to you. Um, these are actually the CASAS competency standards areas, um, consumer economics, community resources, health, employment, independent living, things like that. So um, at the moment, the only set of standards that we are um, currently using in the filtering are CASAS competencies, but we have had requests from the field to um, include other sets of standards. So I know that currently um, with teaching with technology, but in a couple of other places on our website, we are looking at um, including, for example, the CCRS as a set of standards that um, teachers can use for filtering. Also ELPS, so the English Language Proficiency Standards. Um, so we are working on those, but currently the only set of standards that we reference are the CASAS competency. So um, if that helps you to um, in the filtering process, then please um, take advantage of that. So again, with teaching with technology, we, you know, the, the starting area would be a program area, and then within those program areas, you can do some filtering um, to kind of further refine your resource list. So that's the teaching with technology tool. I want to switch over next to web-based class activities. So each month, um, we ask um, an adult ed practitioner to um, write kind of a longer article on a particular technology tool or tool set of tools or a topic that would um, where we're trying to incorporate more technology into the topic. So you'll see that um, this month um, this month's web-based activity is about uh, job success e-portfolio and job preparation skills. So basically, how can we use technology to set up an electronic portfolio that focuses on helping students kind of document their um, job skills, job preparation skills, and their success so far in employment, um, depending on maybe previous jobs they've had and things like that. So as we um, read through the article, you'll see that it's really meant to be kind of an introduction to the topic or the tool. And then really um, kind of a step-by-step -step introduction how I can get started using this tool um, in my classroom. So again, um, it's pretty extensive. Okay, you know, step one, here's what you, you know, if you're um, as the student in the class, step one, step two, step three, step four, and so on and so on. And then we also, um, also focus on, as the teacher, what you need to do on your side that um, corresponds with what the students are doing on the student side. So we have again step-by-step -step instructions on how to work on that. And then towards the bottom of the article we try to do something, okay now that you have kind of a basic set of school, uh, a set of skills at hand, now how can we kind of jump into the activity um, that, or you know jump into how we can use the tool with some basic activities in our classroom. So again, some ideas about how to do that. Also maybe linking to additional resources that would be a part of the um, work that you're doing in the classroom with this topic or tool. And then maybe some additional resources as well. Um, again, we do the web-based class activities on a monthly basis. 
Um, they're currently sorted by program area and then maybe or maybe by kind of a topic area like holidays, for example. Um, one of the things about the activities I'll just mention is that um, and maybe for other parts of the website as well. So I, I mentioned earlier that we launched the, the new website at the um, end of September. So we are, um, we had a very, I don't know if you might have seen our older website, which had a lot of information on the old website. Um, we didn't necessarily move everything over from the old website to the new website. But now that we kind of have some breathing room um, after the launch of the website, um, we're looking at, you know, maybe there might be additional resources that we want to bring over um, from the old website or maybe some better organization of what's currently on the new website. So just for example, this web-based class activities menu that you see here, um, don't be surprised in the future if maybe um, it's further refined, you know, offers more top topics or um, things like that. So we're, tr we're trying to think about how do we best pr um, present the resources here and organize them for use by um, uh, teachers and, and administrators. Okay, web-based class activities. Um, let me switch over to curriculum offers. So one of the things that OTAN has done over the years is worked with um, vendors and other agencies to offer um, curriculum um, pilot program or pilots to the field to try out kind of new and the newest and latest um, programs in the classroom. Um, technology in the classroom. So you'll see right now that we're currently working with six different entities, uh, CK12, Essential Education, iPathways, Learn360, Learning Upgrade, and NROC. And on this page you can get kind of just a basic description of um, the curriculum offer that we have. Um, so for example with Essential Education, um, OTAN is offering a self-paced blended learning course from adult ed for WIOA funded agency teachers. So if we click on the offer, for example, you'll get more information about what's included in the offer um, and maybe kind of like a little guide to the content that's included in the curriculum offer. So in this case, um, this is this blended learning course is to really teach teachers who maybe don't have any experience with online teaching or even maybe as an online student. Um, kind of an, a general introduction um, as to how you get started with online instruction with a focus on blended instruction, blended, uh, blended learning. So um, this is there are a number of units or modules that are included in the blended learning course. So you can see what those modules are, kind of give you a sense of what's included in this particular online um, self-paced course. And then again, if you're interested in that, there is a sign up form. You can contact us for any of the curriculum offers. Um, and we'll get back to you um, to follow up with you. Now, like the training, I just want to mention that the um, we work. Uh, our mission is to work with WIOA-funded agencies and instructors and administrators and staff who work at WIOA-funded agencies. So the curriculum offers are limited to staff members who work at WIOA-funded agencies, and that would include any of the curriculum offers that you see here. But again, if you have questions or maybe if you want to, um, you know, if you want to learn more about what the curriculum offer is, you can always contact us and we can always um, tell you more about what is, um, you know, who the agency is and what the, what the offer is and a little bit of information about their product. Okay, the last resource I want to talk about here is our um, California Adult Education Courses. So this is actually a, um, a site that's attached to our OTAN website, but it opens up um, at a different URL, it's adultedcourses.org. So um, this site is dedicated to um, hosting online courses for WIOA-funded agencies in California. Um, and so you'll see here there are many agencies across the state um, that um, we host online courses for. Um, this site that we're working in is Moodle. So Moodle is a learning management system. It's similar to other LMSs that you may have heard of. Um, Blackboard, for example, Canvas, Schoology, those are other um, LMS uh, learning management systems. The one that we use is Moodle. We offer it um, or we host it freely for adult education agencies across the state. Um, if you would like to get a sense of some of the um, courses that we have um, that you might want to take advantage of um, at your agency, 
you could take a look at these top three um, categories here at the top. So the first one is developed courses. You'll see that we have samples of a variety of courses here. For example, an advanced CSL course, um, a college transition and career development course, a writing course, USA Learns, wraparound course. If you go to other shared courses, we have a longer list here. Again, some um, some of these courses we the um, we work when we work with our um, curriculum offer partners. Um, some of those courses end up here. So, for example, the N, some of the NROC courses. NROC is a curriculum offer partner that OTAN works with. Um, so, some of their online courses are listed here. Um, if you work in ESL and distance learning, you might be familiar with the Putting English to Work series. We have those digital courses available here, as well as a variety of other courses that we have listed here. Um, we are also working on EL Civics. Um, we, we previously hosted um, a couple of EL Civics related online courses, and we're kind of reorganizing this section um, that, so that they're tied to specific co-apps. Um, so again, you can get samples of those courses, or um, if you become a member, um, oh, sorry, if you create an account on the California Adult Ed Courses site um, and you work at a WIOA-funded agency, we can um, basically make copies of these courses for you that would then show up in your account on Cal Adult, adult Ed Courses. And then you can either use those adult ed, um, sorry, you can use those online courses as is, or you can further customize the courses depending on other resources that you might want to include in your online courses. So we do a lot of training around our Moodle site and how to get started with online uh, teaching on the Adult Ed Courses site. Um, so I would highly recommend that you work with OTAN on a training first, perhaps a face-to-face -face training at your site, where we could include other teachers who might be interested in working online as well. We'll do kind of a basic intro, uh, intro to our Moodle site and working within a Moodle course. And then from there, any of the shared courses, the EL Civics courses, you can in, you can add those to your um, uh, account on the Adult Ed Courses site. If you also just want to create a blank, you know, a course from scratch, you also have the opportunity to do that as well. And all of that is freely hosted by OTIN on our Adult Ed Courses site. Okay, um, so that's it for resources. I don't know if there are any questions about um, those resources? Veronica, if any questions have come up? Well, let me switch back over. No questions. We're seeing if there's any questions. Or... OK. OK, let me switch back over to my slides. Give me a second here. Luckily, I remember how to do this. <laughs> OK, perfect. OK. Um, so, the la so we have about five minutes or so. So the last thing I want to talk about is how we can stay connected to OTAN after today. Um, and there are a number of different ways to do so. Um, I'm going to, some of my slides here um, focus on um, the news items um, that we publish three times a week or try to publish three times a week. We're also on social media sites. Um, and then if maybe I'll talk about Student Succeed as well while we're back on the live site. Okay, once again, let me go to the OTAN website. Okay, so again, we're back on the OTAN website. So we're looking at the Stay Connected drop-down menu that's um, across the top here. So um, let's talk about what's included here. So Adult Education News. So again, on the home page of our website, we publish a news item, um, we, we, and we try to cover a variety of um, te technology related topics on the in our news items um, so today's news item has to do with um, privacy um, with ed tech products which is a huge um, concern you know when we're using ed tech tools in the classroom um, you know what are the vendors and entities that have created these products what are they doing with the data that they're collecting in these tools so um, the news item focuses on a tool um, or on an agency called Common Sense Education, which has developed a brand new privacy rating, which is really um, a cool feature. They do a lot of profiling of technology tools um, in general, but a new feature that they've added to those profiles is a privacy rating. And so if you'd like to learn more about their 
privacy rating in particular, but kind of privacy in general, they do, they have a very extensive um, um, rating system that they use, which would be very helpful for us to, you know, if we want to learn more about data privacy and data collection and things like that. So anyway, news item that appears on the home page, we, we try to publish those three times a, uh, a week. But if you go to adult education news under Stay Connected, you can see a list of kind of the, the most recent news items that we published on our OTAN website. Um, and then if you want to do kind of a more extensive search, you can do that, but you can also look back in previous years. Um, we've written a lot of great news items in 2019. I encourage you to take a look and see what's included there. Um, we also wrote great news items in 2018 and 2017. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that you could read um, about technology used in the classroom. Um, in the past few years. So again, those are the adult ed news, news items. We also publish on a monthly basis Administrator Digest and Teacher Digest. So if you click on those, um, you can take a look and see um, the current digest and maybe the previous ones for the school year. Um, we were a little bit waylaid by the Thanksgiving holiday, so, um, but we're very close to publishing the December Administrator Digest and Teacher Digest. But the Administrator Digest um, we try to tailor um, the content here to administrators, um, information that would be useful for administrators. Um, you'll see in November we talked about the TDLP, Te Technology and Distance Learning Plan. When we switch over to the YouTube channel, I'll show you, we actually have some um, videos on setting smart goals um, that you may want to include in your TDLP. Um, news items. Um, of particular interest to administrators. We also publish our upcoming trainings and how you can get professional development back at your agency. Teacher side, similar um, content. We have news items of, um, you know, uh, of interest in particular to teachers. We also focus on the web-based class activities with the current one. Um, this was from November, so this is last month's um, web-based class activity. Also, in case you missed the previous month, we have a link to that. We try to spotlight something on the OTAN website or something that we're working on. So last month, we talked about the Teaching with Technology tool for teachers. Again, upcoming trainings and getting PD at your site. So if you become an, a member on the website, again, you can opt in to getting those notifications for either teacher or administrator digest. So the, those notifications will be emailed to you. We publish a newsletter um, three times a year. So um, we published our fall newsletter about a month or so ago. So if you didn't have a chance to take a look at that, it tends to be a little bit more, um, some lengthier um, articles on items of interest to adult educators across the field. We have a focus on our Student Succeed winners from this year. Um, some more information about our trainings, both face-to-face -face and online. Again, that's something that you can opt to receive um, when you in your membership account. So if you would like to receive that, make sure you say yes to getting the OTAN newsletter. We are also on social media. So as I mentioned, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and our YouTube channel. Um, please follow us on any and all of those channels. Um, but I want to... Um, bring us over to the YouTube channel just for a second, because I've talked about it at a few points. So um, we use video a lot. We like to share video with the field. Um, and so on our YouTube channel, we have a number of videos that are included there. Um, if you are interested in the DLAC, um, you can take a look and see um, these videos are kind of profiles of what the different agencies have been working on back at their agency. So maybe if you're thinking about that 2020 application, you might want to see what um, agencies have been working on over the last few years um, and you know, kind of learn from them, learn from their experiences when you're considering your own application for DLAC next year. Um, our Technology and Distance Learning Symposium, we do a few videos um, we, uh, from each of those TDLSs. You can see last year's videos um, and the previous two years. Um, here's where we link to the OTAN Tech Talks. So if you click on, oh, I think I've already showed you that. I don't, actually, I don't remember if I've showed you that. But anyway, this is where we have the list of um, the archived Tech Talks. So you can take a look at those here. Um, other workshops that we've done, you can watch those videos. 
Here's that section on SMART goals for TDLP. So we have a longer um, video, but we have a couple of short videos as well. And then a few other things that we've been working on over the years, teaching with technology, for example, we have a series of videos about that. So please visit our YouTube channel um, for more um, information that's included in those videos. Um, I will just mention um, while we have a minute, students succeed. So one of the projects that we've worked on for many years um, at OTAN is our Adult Education Student Succeed pro uh, project. Um, this is basically a program that honors um, a couple of adult education students and their successes each year. Um, if you'd like to learn more about previous winners, um, here's the list of students from many, many years, the many previous years. If you see a little video icon next to the name of a student, you can also watch the video story for that particular um, student. Um, I always like to encourage adult educators to share these stories in their classrooms and schools across the state. Um, we have many students who have gone through similar experiences, and I think it's always helpful for, for adult, educator, or adult education students to know that other students have been in those similar situations and have succeeded, even you know, despite whatever circum circumstances people have gone through. Um, I really think it's very inspirational to share these with other students and staff members, for that matter, back at agencies um, to really, you know, um, see the su success that other students have had in adult education programs. Okay, um, so that's on Stay Connected. I'm going to switch back to my slides. I think we're at the end of the hour. Um, let me just switch back to the slides here. There we go. And ba, 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 students succeed. OK, so here we go. So for more information, um, here's our contact information. You can call us. You can email us. Um, the contact form that's on our website, please feel free to fill out the contact form if you have any questions about OTAN website or what OTAN is up to or OTAN trainings or um, if you just want to stay connected with us, you know, reach out that way. Um, this is a tool, a 3-2-1 reflection tool. I learned about this in a training recently. I think it's a really nice way for each of us to think about what we've learned today. So, you know, think about three things we've learned today, two things you might want to share with your colleagues back at your agency, and one thing that you will try um, at the um, after learning about the OTAN website at, uh, in today's webinar. All right, Veronica, I'm at the end of my slides. I don't know if there are any questions or anything to wrap up. Um, before we end today. Thank you, Anthony. I am not seeing any questions, but I do see Lorena is typing, so we'll wait um, and see what she has to say. Oh, she said very informative, and thank you. Yes, thank you, Anthony, so much for today's webinar and for the wealth of information you provided everyone. Um, I have posted the URL of exactly where the PowerPoint as well as the recording for today's webinar will be located on the California Adult Education Program website. So please be sure to reference this recording as well as the PowerPoint. In addition, please share it with colleagues um, as they were not able to make it today so that everyone is informed of the number of resources and tools that OTAN has available in adult education. And I see Lily is typing as well, so we'll see what she has to say. Um, once we do close the webinar, an evaluation will appear. Please be sure to fill out the evaluation to let Anthony know what you thought about today's webinar. And if there are any other professional development or technical assistance topics you would like us to address, whether it has to do with educational technology or some other adult education program strand that you are in need of at this time either via webinar or even in an in-person workshop. Okay, and I do still see, okay, um, Lily said thank you and a lot of great resources. Okay, great, so it seems like everyone got something out of today's webinar, which is great. Again, please be sure to access the recording as well as the webinar um, PowerPoint presentation on the California Adult Education website and complete the, eva <laughs> excuse me, the evaluation. Oh, and one last thing, we do have one more webinar that we will be hosting next week, 
and um, that webinar is titled Increasing Equity Through Teacher Professional Learning, and that webinar is being brought to you by our partner agency, the American Institutes for Research, or CalPRO, as most of you may know. So if you haven't done so already, please be sure to register for next week's webinar via the URL that I have um, provided in the chat box. That will be a great webinar and a great way to end the 2019 year and moving forward into the 2020 year. All right, so I'm not seeing anyone else typing. Thank you again, Anthony, and thank you to Melinda and Holly for your support today. And I will close the webinar. Hope to see you all next Tuesday. Have a great day.